Hello my fellow investors and welcome back to another stock analysis video as well as earnings report. Now this one was brought up by Tony Myers where he has been recommending CVS and MC. I just did CVS because it did have earnings on the 8th but Moelle's company, I don't even know how you say that but this company also had earnings on that date. Now I am taking this as a recommendation. And for that reason, I'm actually going to show you guys right here the recommendations list. Obviously, Tony has mentioned this before. However, you can see that there are a few ones before MC. But I'm going to mention it right now, guys, that I'm going to mark MC down for Tony as complete and possibly the beginning of next week, right? So like Monday, Tuesday, or even Sunday, I will begin clearing out some of these lists as well because well there's a lot of companies that you guys have recommended and it's been a while so i'm gonna start just nailing them you know on a daily basis sometimes even more than one company per video just so that way we could just get through them as much as possible and i could do other videos as well obviously if there's a company that has major earnings that week i will prioritize that one but i will begin to now take care of this list i still also if I could ask, please do not make any more recommendations, at least for the time being, until I get to around like WBD, because if you guys recommend more stuff while I'm like still barely hanging on to these ones, I'm not going to get to it for several, several weeks. So just please keep that in mind. But for now, I will take out MC for Tony, even though I do see there are three other ones up here. I'm going to take that one out. And today we're going to cover MC. So with that said, let's get started with this analysis. So let's start with the earnings summary here on Seeking Alpha. We got EPS normalized actual came in at 33 cents, which was in line. EPS gap actual 28 cents missed by 7 cents. Revenue $202.14 million, which is missed by $9.2 million. So just from this, we can see that this company is fairly small. In fact, when we get to the market cap, you guys are going to see that this is a fairly small company. That doesn't mean that it's a bad company just off the bat, right? We want to see if their fundamentals are still in line with what we would like to see. So with that, let's come into their earnings support. And like always, guys, this will be linked in the description below if you guys would like to read it for yourselves. Because remember, this is not financial advice and that every investment is the present value of all future cash flows. So looking at Moelis and company. Fourth quarter gap revenues, $207.2 million. Fourth quarter adjusted revenues of $202.1 million, down 52% from the prior year period. So right then and there, we're already seeing that revenues are crashing, right? Revenues already did worse than they did in 2021 fourth quarter. Gap revenues for full year 2022, $985.3 million. Adjusted revenues for the full year 2022 were $970 million. Again, down 38% from the prior year period. Gap net income, 28 cents per share diluted for the fourth quarter of 2022 and $2.14 per share diluted for the full year. Adjusted net income, 33 cents per share diluted for the fourth quarter of 2022 and $2.22 per share diluted for the full year. Looking at the full year 2022 adjusted pre-tax margin of 22.5%. And we also see here, well, actually a couple points. They said, continue to execute an organic growth strategy. In 2022, we added 25 managing directors to our platform. This includes 16 internal promotes and 9 external hires. In early 2023, we promoted 8 advisory professionals to managing director and announced 4 external hires. So you can see that they are growing. Okay, not too bad. Fortress balance sheet with cash and short-term investments of $412.6 million and no debt or goodwill. Declared quarterly dividend of $0.60 cents per share with respect to the 2022 performance year. We will have returned approximately $315.6 million of capital to shareholders through dividends and share repurchases. The thing about that last part is that they are not repurchasing shares. We're going to take a look at that later but yeah no it's just solely through dividends and again we have to take a look at if that dividend is safe because just because they're issuing one doesn't mean that it is safe so we're gonna have to, have to take a look at that in regards to their cash flow but let's come down here and see what the CEO actually had to say. It was actually very short. Quote, I am cautious about the short-term deal environment, but our strong balance sheet and talented bankers make me optimistic about the competitive position and ability to execute for all stakeholders, said Ken Moelis, chairman and chief. Oh, so that's where the company's name is from. So it's actually good. 
you know, the, the fact that it is uh, still founder led is actually really, really good in my personal opinion. But that's about it. That's really much all he said. So, yeah, I mean, it is what it is. Let's actually take a look at now some of these numbers and compare them to 2021. Obviously, we did see a massive drop in revenues when it comes to 2021 and 2022, going from $425 million to $207.2 million. That is a decrease of 51%, at least on the gap basis. And on the non gap, it was $417.3 million to $202.3 one four million dollars decrease of again 52 percent income went from income was massive massive drop guys 157 million to 32.3 million decrease of 79 percent absolutely crazy and same exact kind of variant when it came to the not the adjusted non-gap when it comes to the net income loss 113.5 million 22.67 million decrease of 80 percent guys massive and once again very very similar to that of the non-gap so now with that said let's come into the calculator guys we got the ticker symbol for mc market cap of three billion dollars i told you guys it was a really tiny market cap and their current pe is actually not too far off from what i normally like to see and that is a 20.7 with the current share price of 44 dollars and 25 cents taking a look at this on the one year they're down 16.45 percent year to date they're up a whopping 13.55 percent 52 week ranges is 33 dollars and 12 cents to 54 dollars and 46 cents and we can see that just today they are up 1.17 percent they do pay out a dividend of two dollars and 40 cents which is a yield of 5.5 percent no payout ratio five-year category of almost six percent two consecutive years of dividend payment x dividend date is actually coming up on the 17th of february payout date is going to be on the 28th of march and they do pay their dividends quarterly and based off of the current shares outstanding guys they pay out 153.6 million dollars in dividends every single year which after this is paid they're still left with 271.1 million dollars in their five-year average free cash flow and almost 1 billion dollars in their last year's free cash flow at 767 million dollars these payout ratios actually are very safe believe it or not yeah it's actually not too bad i thought it was gonna be a lot higher it's 16.68 percent for the last year's free cash flow and for the average it is 36.17 percent so you know what i kind of take it back you know i did kind of have hesitancy when reading the earnings report when they said something about the dividend because i'm like nah small company and paying out a massive dividend like that five percent yield that's massive i don't think that they'll be able to cover it but no, no, no they, they are able to cover it according to these payout ratios in regards to the cash flow. So now coming into the actual fundamentals, we got the net income five years ago of $29.4 million, two one year ago of $365.2 million, massive increase of 1,142%. We could see that, well, they had a massive jump from five to four years ago, 29.4 to 140.7. Then during COVID, they came down to 105.1. Then they shot up to 178.8 and then a massive jump from 178.8 million to 365 so for that reason i'm giving this a 60 percent and when it comes into the free cash flow we kind of see similar things we really really do kind of now in the net income we saw that the five-year goal value was lower than the three-year ago well in the free cash flow is going from 227.6 million to 920.6 million we can see here that the three-year is lower than that of the five-year value value but you can see it's kind of following the same trend as that as the net income so now i'm going to give it roughly the same grade as the net income now when it comes into this change it is a 304 percent increase with an average of 424.7 million dollars and as i said i'm giving this a 60 percent looking at the revenue kind of flat not gonna lie this was kind of subpar in my personal opinion going from 885.8 million dollars to one year ago of 985.3 million dollars increase of 11.23 percent now the reason why i'm giving this a 50 percent guys is because well you can see that it's just not really that i guess exciting if that makes any sense like it's not consistently increasing their highest year was two years ago 1.5 billion dollars but then one year ago they came down to 985 million dollars still higher than the prior three four and five years ago but it's just not really growing in the kind of direction that i'm looking for if, if, if that makes any sense so for that reason 
I'm going to give this a 50% because it's just really uncertain to what's happening here. Looking at the total assets, total liabilities, we can see that with the past five years, they have been the positive, which is really, really good to see and increasing. Small dip in this one year ago and today, but nonetheless, it's still looking fairly good. Average total assets, it is $1.23 billion. Average liabilities is $786.86 million. And doing this difference, we get $441.26 million. I'm giving this a 70% percent mainly because well they did dip here from to the one year ago so i'm gonna give them you know what no i'm actually going to change this let's change this to like 75 percent because you know they are still increasing it overall and i yeah i think that's just the main reason they are still increasing it overall and this one year ago in today's value it is higher than three year ago as well so 75 percent looking at the cash flow minus the total liabilities this one is just absolutely all over the place the lowest point was two years ago at negative 688.9 million dollars however as of one year ago they're in the positive probably because their free cash flow one year ago was almost a billion dollars so it's it's just all over the place right you can see that they went from negative to slightly positive or at least going upwards from five to four years ago but then they just kept going down and down and down and down up until two years ago and then they shot it right back up so a lot of uncertainty here, a lot of moving parts. So I'm going to give this a 50%. And the average cash flow minus the average liabilities, it is negative $328 million. Now for the shares outstanding. This one, yeah, it's 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 bad because, well, we just read the earnings report that they're giving back to the shareholders in the form of dividends and repurchasing of shares, except that they're not repurchasing shares. Take a look at this. Five years ago, 45.6 million shares to today of 64 million shares. Increase of 40.35% from the five year and from the previous year to the current year, another increase of almost two and a quarter of a percent. And on top of that, every single year, they have been increasing it nonstop. So for that reason, I have to give this a 0%. They're diluting you guys a massive, massive amount. And lastly, when it comes to the cash equivalents, they currently hold $148.2 million, an average of almost $260 million. Looking at the overall grades, we gave them the income of 60%, free cash flow 60%, revenue 50%, assets minus liabilities 75%, cash flow minus liabilities 50%, shares outstanding of 0% for an overall grade of 50%. Yeah, it's a, it's a company that's like halfway down the middle. Yeah, it is, right? Like, the profit metrics are okay. Revenue could be better. Shares of standing is awful. They really need to fix that shares of standing, guys. They really, really do. So, it's a 50%. It really just depends as to what you believe this company will do in the future, at least when it comes to their fundamentals. Now, let's actually take a look at the current share price is, is a buy. Now, we got the revenues of negative 9, negative 7, and negative 5. And you're like, negative what that's crazy well take a look at this on seeking alpha we can see that the forward revenue growth is estimated almost negative nine percent so i went with it i went with negative nine negative seven and negative five and for the projected share buyback in the next four years i went negative 35 negative 33 and negative 31 essentially guys they have been doing 40 percent of issuing of shares in the past five years so i'm going to say they're going to dial it back but it's not going to dial it back by a lot negative 35 percent it as the worst assumption and negative 31 percent for the best assumption with a required rate of return of 10 percent this is between 52 dollars and 42 cents to 63 dollars and 24 cents adjusting for debt this actually comes up they actually have more cash on hand than they do debt which is really good but this becomes $53.57 to $64.43 with a margin of safety of 5 10 50 percent this is now between $45.53 to $61.21 with a current share price of $44.25 guys this is looking like an all-out buy even at the worst assumption lowest assumption negative nine percent revenue and a predicted share buyback of negative 35 percent Guys, the 15% margin of safety, it is at $45.53. Current share price, $44. We are under pretty much all of these. And according to my assumptions, this is looking like a buy. Now, please, this is based off of my assumptions. If you guys do not believe them, which I really do hope that you do not, please make your own assumptions. All of these calculators are available for free. I have this one the book value one, the revaluation one, and a dividend tracking sheet for everybody to have because I want everybody to take control of their finances. I'm only here to give you my opinion and to provide like a guide. That's really it. At the end of the day, I'm not going to buy this company, right? Maybe somebody else will. But me personally, 
I have a different strategy. I don't want to buy this company, but if somebody else wants to, this is why I provide all of them for free, as well as the link to the earnings report will be in the description below. Please read it for yourselves. Do your own due diligence, because at the end of the day, guys, as I said before, it's not financial advice. Every investment is the present value of all future cash flow. All I'm asking for in return is just like, subscribe, comment. It really does help with the algorithm on YouTube. And I got big, big, big announcement, guys. As of I'm recording this, we're up. Well, actually, we're, we're more than now. 2,000 subscribers. Absolutely insane. The channel reached 1,000 subscribers in September. And not even a year later. Guys, we're already up to 2,000? Y'all are crazy. Y'all are crazy. I, I really... I just cannot thank you all enough. Again, the best way that you guys can support me is just and support the channel is just like, subscribe, comment, and of course, share. I recently had somebody, you know, uh, super comment or I guess tip. I don't really know how you say it, ten dollars. And you know, while I am grateful, I really, really am. I believe the his name was a uh, any name or so, or something along those lines. He um, while I, while I am grateful for that, guys, the best way that you guys can help is just. Watch the videos, comment, like, subscribe, tell your friends, share online, right? All of that stuff really does help. And I know that it's rough out there. And I would rather, me personally, I would rather you guys take that $10 and put it into the S&P 500, right? I would rather you guys do that than to give it to me. Obviously, I'm not going to say no if you guys give it to me, right? But Please take care of yourself before taking care of somebody else. Make sure your house is in order before cleaning somebody else's house. So thank you all so much, guys. I really do appreciate it. And I am going to make a live stream with my co-host, uh, Mike. He's the one that does technical analysis on Tuesday on CPI Day. We're going to cover CPI. And I'm also wanting to cover the future of the channel and where I would like to take the channel. Because at the end of the day, well... I am the founder, and I guess I technically am the CEO of this thing. So I really would like to, you know, give like a, a state of the channel kind of update, right? Kind of like a parody of like the state of the union. So the state of the channel. So yeah, if you guys would like to stop by, uh, ask any questions, this will also be like a live stream for like an AMA kind of style thing. So if you guys want to ask me anything, you guys, you guys can ask me anything. I'll try to answer to the best of my ability. And we're just going to chill out. We're going to read the CPI. We're going to, I'm going to tell you guys where I would like to take the channel. And if you guys have questions, I will try to answer them to the best of my ability. So stop by. It'll be at 7 p.m. on Tuesday Eastern Standard Time. So see you all then. Now, when it comes into this dividend, let's take a look because 5% yield, guys, is massive. Putting in $5,725, this nets you an annual dividend of $310.52. Absolutely crazy. And again, the discounted free cash flow is saying that this is looking like a very good buy right now. The one issue with this company that I have is, you know, their dividends looking good. Clearly, they're their compare ratio is saying that they're able to sustain it. The discounted free cash flow saying that it is a buy pretty much all around. The biggest issue, guys, is this way they grade. It's just a 50%. If this was like at 60 or 65, at least for me, this would be an all-out buy, right? It's a small company, so obviously they're going to have a little bit of issues. But 50% isn't there for me, man. It really, really isn't. So, yeah, at least when it comes to dividend perspective, $310.52 absolutely massive all in all when it comes to this company thank you so much for the recommendation tony and uh it's uh, it's interesting it has a lot of positives it really really does but the fundamentals are just uh they're just not there for me man they really really aren't 50 percent is just it's 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 halfway it's it's halfway and if, if it was like at like 65 or like high 60s i would be like oh i would definitely consider this but I don't know. Maybe you can tell me something I might be wrong at with their fundamentals. Maybe if you disagree with one of the grades, then leave it in the comment section below. But that to me is just my two cents on this company. That pretty much is it for this video. Like if you like, comment, subscribe. It really does help with the algorithm on YouTube. You guys can follow us on the YouTube site. Link in the description below. So with that said, peace out. And we'll see you all in the next earnings report analysis video as well as stock analysis too.